morning. Good morning. morning. Believe the words of that song? Yes. yes. Awesome words. It's never too late. We can change. I think the series this month is all about that. And it's as simple as loving. Loving ourselves. When we begin to love ourselves a little bit more, we begin to change. Because we get to let go and begin to be who we truly are. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love the Lord thy God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. We've heard those words. I don't know if we've listened to them. But with those words, Christ gave us the key to ascension and liberation. The key to enlightenment. The key to knowing who we really are. And then giving us that opportunity to be who we are. Energy-wise, if you love God and love God above all else, you're going to be filled with God's love and God's presence, and you're naturally going to love your neighbor. These two simple keys are so profound and so powerful, yet we think they're too simple, or we're just not going to go there because we don't want to change. We don't want to get out of our comfort zone. Uh, it all has to do with consciousness. Who we are, who we present to the world, is at a functioning level of awareness, our consciousness. So if we want to change our consciousness, we change our behaviors. We change our thoughts. The patterns that we've created, we can recreate. Jesus the Christ, a master teacher, the teacher of love for humankind, uh, was aware of this uh, from the beginning. And I want to share in uh, the Aquarian Gospel in chapter uh, 17. And Jesus is 10 years old. This is, this is very neat. He's 10 years old and he's, and this is a, He's at the temple and he's being taught by a rabbi, rabbi after uh, their service. And the rabbi asks him about love. Tell him about, tell him, should it be about love? And, and, and so Jesus, as a 10-year-old, tells this rabbi about love and, and how it is the, the, the golden cord that really ties all the commandments together. And the rabbi says, well, who taught you this? I said, no one taught me this. This truth is within each heart. And we have to go within our hearts and then the truth will be revealed to us. So he uh, sits with the rabbi and they share their thought process, I guess. But that evening he goes home and he's talking with his mom. And this is what he says to his mom. The rabbi seems to think that God is partial in his treatment of the sons of men, that Jews are favored and are blessed above all other men. I do not see how God can have his favorites and be just. Are not the Samaritans and Greeks and Romans just as much the children of the Holy One as are the Jews? It surely would be well if we could break these barriers down so that the Jews might see that God has other children that are just as blessed. I want to go from Jewry land and meet my kin in other countries of my fatherland. So... As a young child, he's already seeing how separation isn't the way. Separation is limitation. And then the last thing, I want to go from Jewry land and meet my kin in other countries of my fatherland. He's 10 years old. When he's 11, he begins his journey. And a couple chapters down the road, he's on his journey to India. He begins studying with the masters. And it's a wonderful story of understanding that we are one. There's one God and there's one people of God. And once we begin to, to look at that, and so at a, as a young age, he's seeing how the uh, Jewish nation has separated themselves from everyone else. We've heard the term, the chosen ones, haven't we, the chosen people? Uh, we say here, uh, the chosen people are the, those that choose. Choose to be a son of God, a daughter of God. <clears throat> choose that. And then you walk into that life. You walk that walk. So 
we can look at our lives and can't we see how we have uh, built walls around ourselves or in our world that keep us separating from our brothers and sisters that we're on this walk with? We have uh, racial war, war, walls, gender walls, economic walls, cultural walls. All these walls that man has created, we've created them in ourself. God didn't create the walls. I think it's really neat about the, you know, the, when they show the Earth from a satellite, you see this beautiful blue-green planet, and there aren't any lines dividing up countries. It's one world. And it is one world. We live in a one people. And so, individually, to look at maybe the walls that we've created around ourselves that keep us separate from our family, our spiritual family, that keep us separate from our uh, brothers and sisters. And this is one of those uh, directives of the song. It's never too late to change. We have to let go. Let go of that past patterning, that past memory that keeps us in a certain identity. A certain identity. If Jesus came and shared with us that God's our Father, we're the children of God, so that's the identity. If we accept it, we can begin to walk that. And that takes letting go. Letting go of the old memories of who we are, who we've been told we are, what we can do, what we can expect. We came here to love. We came here to love. We came here to love others because they're the children of God just like we are. What happens is we expect things from people. And if we don't get what we expect from people, what do we usually do? Withhold our love? Withhold our love. And when we withhold our love, <clears throat> who are we really hurting? Ourselves. You see? Because we are love. We are love. We came here just for who we are. <clears throat> you didn't do what I wanted you to. I didn't give them the love. You see? And, and don't we see this playing out every day, individually, as a city, as a nation, as a world? We've got to make these agreements. You know, this is it. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. We can raise above that. We can change. And we can love for the sake of loving. We can love for the sake of being love. See, the love of God made manifest. Allowing our love to flow. That word withholding is uh, very powerful. And once we can begin to, let's just let that out of our vocabulary for a while. So instead of withholding love, we can begin to flow love. I'm going to allow my flow of love to just be natural. No conditions. No conditions. Just flow in the love. And as we flow love, that's when we grow. When we flow, we grow. It's an interesting concept. That's a simple concept. And it's a concept of our divine nature. I teach in a, a workshop. And uh, at the beginning of the workshop, I have on the board, remember, 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 the key to ascension's remembering. It's pretty cool. But we're to remember who we really are. We're here to remember that we're spiritual beings. And that knowing's within our heart. It's not in our head. Within our head are all the identities and concepts and rules and laws about who we are and what life's all about. And that was taught to us by man. It wasn't taught to us by God. See, it's the Father within who really speaks the words for us, and to begin to listen to that. So remember, 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 it's the key to ascension, to lift into that higher level of consciousness. Here's a, here's a second sentence of that. You cannot remember until you're ready to forget. What's that mean? You're not ready to remember until you're ready to forget. 
to forget these false teachings. See? To forget the identity that society has given you, the world has given you. Forget the idea of a race. Forget the idea of a gender. To forget the agenda of our culture. Do you see? To forget that. Because who are we really? Spirit, we're the sons and daughters of God. So once we begin to just shift our identity, shift that identity, that's who I truly am, and begin to listen to that inner guidance and then to follow that, to begin to walk, to walk as a son of God, to walk as a daughter of God. And you know, we, we've all changed in our life, haven't we? Haven't we all made changes in our life? Even young guys, young people have made changes, but the only we can look back at our life is, man, I tell a lot of people I've had 10 lifetimes this <laughs> lifetime. Because I'll change, and I have changed a lot. And I know people back, and some of those early ones wouldn't even know who I am or wouldn't even recognize me. Because I am so far out of that world that I was so immersed in. And I've walked right into a different world, and I'm living a different world, and I've got a whole new identity. And what's really happening is I'm allowing my spirit to flow. Where before, I allowed my energy to come into alignment with the outer world. The cultural conditioning. The social mores. And until we're ready to let go, let go. We can't remember who we are. You can't remember too. It sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? You cannot remember until you're ready to let go. Let go of that which no longer serves you. Uh, you know, we've, we've had a pretty heavy duty teaching, like through religion, about suffering. You know, that's how we grow. You gotta suffer. <laughs> Cindy and I think suffering's optional. <laughs> we try to teach that. Because if you begin to understand who you are, you're going to make choices to allow you to maybe navigate it with a little bit more peace, love, harmony, joy in your world. However, if you know who you are, when things happen, it allows you to gain understanding, okay? Understanding of what's really happening, you see? And then it doesn't pull you down doesn't pull you down. I was reading uh, in, uh, in a science magazine, and it was uh, talking about all the work that they do on uh, like spinal cord injuries and things like that. And, and, and it's really the triumph of the human spirit that allows people to, to move back into maybe even a more unlimited nature than they were when they had full mobility. And there was this, a story of this one young man, and uh, he had, uh, you know, dove in and broke his neck and was quadriplegic. And then he started using his mouth with pants with computers and, and began to interact with the world and then really took that opportunity to really express who he is. That came out, his true nature, his true self came out. At the end of the article, he said, I didn't let my broken neck break me. I didn't let my broken neck break me. And I thought that was real powerful. We all have you know, so many experiences in our life that we let break us. When we know who we are, we can see those experiences as just that. Experience to really understand who we are, to get to know who we are better. There's so much within us that is crying to come out and to connect and share with one another. And the simple aspect is love, is love. And the teachings of Jesus the Christ are so powerful in that essence. Now when he said that to those people, did they, I wonder if they even knew what the word enlightenment was all about. Hey, here's the keys to enlightenment, liberation. Okay, I'm sure they wanted liberation. I'm sure they wanted to be free 
from their oppression of the man. But enlightenment, enlightenment to be filled with light, allowing that love, kindle that flame of love that's within our heart, let it grow big and bright to fill us, radiate to burn away the dross of illusion, to be clear in our expression. It's, just, it's a simple process. And, and Jesus really was heralding or coming for the Aquarian Age. Because two years later, we're beginning to move into a consciousness where we can begin to understand what he was really talking about. To really understand the power of love. To understand that love is the most powerful energy in the universe. Love can move through that wall. We can't. Love is the most powerful energy in the universe. And all he was saying is like, connect with this love. This is who you are. See, God's in everything and everyone. And God is love. God's within you. God's within me. To begin to just move into that arena, we can't help but change our behavior patterns. A lot of times the word what we use about Jesus' teachings is behavior modification. Begin to modify our behavior. And a funny thing happens, once we begin to modify our behavior, it keeps unfolding. I'm ready to let go of this. <clears throat> Keep walking. I'm ready to let go of this. And in the process, our spirit just gets stronger and stronger. Our light gets brighter and brighter. And we begin to be who we truly are. When we begin to understand and know and be who we are, that helps us. That really allows us to honor another as a child of God. To honor the God within that person. Honor the God within that person. Suffering. Suffering is counterproductive. We can suffer for lifetimes because we believe we're doing good. When Cindy and I uh, first got together, I think she did a Roman on me. We moved into this one lifetime. She saw this one aspect of me where I was down in this pit. Okay, so picture this, this big old pit, 24 walls of dirt. And I'm down, you know, laying on my stomach, chained down in this pit. Say, <clears throat> dialoguing, what are you doing there? I'm showing God how much I love him through suffering. You know, I don't think I'm the only one that has been in that pit or any other arena where the path to God was through suffering. <clears throat> and yet God, thank you, I freed myself. See, we came here to love. So, so it's not how much we have suffered that matters. It's how much we've loved. It's how much we've loved. And once we begin to kind of get that, God is love, God's in everyone, everything, God's within me, God's within you, we begin to modify our behavior. We have the opportunity to modify our behavior. So it's not how much we've suffered that's matter, that matters, it's how much we've loved we've loved. We evolve spiritually by developing the courage to love. What keeps us from love is fear. And our courage will allow us to rise above the fear. You see? So that's another one of those hidden teachings of Jesus. Hey, try this, you guys. Try this love process for a while. And you try it and pretty soon you walk out of one world right into another. To, to live in a world that's filled with love and support and cooperation. 
Don't you know that world exists? There's people living that world on planet Earth. There's people living in the world of pain and agony and, and torment also. It has to do with consciousness. And you're not going to take that fear, okay, vibration, into that world of love and cooperation and beauty and joy. It doesn't match the energy. Right? It's going to kick right out of there. Nope. And so, this is what when Jesus said to be enlightened, to be liberated. Love is the key. Love is the answer. And we all, where we're at, have plenty of opportunities to love, don't we? Collective, yes. 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 <laughs> we all know what we could let go of. But a lot of times, if I let go, or so if I let go, or if I let my guard down, you know, something will happen. You see what I'm saying? To, to trust, see? Trust in the power of love. Trust in the power of love. That's the teachings of Jesus. Trust in the power of love. It's the most powerful energy in the universe. It's within you. You know, once you have courage to love, once you have courage to let go, and just breathe and, and relax into that energy. Relax into your energy. Relax in the energy that's in the genetics of each cell of your body. Relax into love. Relax into love. And when we relax into love, that puts us in that space where we're in that connection of creator creation. And we call that oneness. Creator creation. Oneness. God's within us. God's within all. Do we want to make that journey? It's up to us. Do I make the journey of love? We've been doing this fear for a long time. And suffering for a long time. We've moved into a new age. To move out of our emotions. Okay, just emotional reaction to life to be able to understand the wisdom of God and the love of God. Bring those together and begin to walk this walk in this new age. And it's just a new perception. We change our perception. A new heaven and a new earth. I don't know how much the geography is going to change on our planet, but the perception is sure is changing right now. And we can see that. Can you see how you've, how you've changed perceptions of yourself and people? Yes. Globally, it's happening. And that's what it takes. As above, so below, we begin to constantly participate in the transformation. spiritually by developing the courage to love. Love rids us of fear. Love rids us of fear. So if earth is our school and life is our teacher. There's these electives out there. And we gotta let go of by choosing fear as our elective class. Gonna let go of that. I'm going to sign up for love. 101. 202. <laughs> keeps going. Because as we graduate, each time, we let go. We let go of a layer. That proverbial onion. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Lighter and freer. We lift and lift and lift. To be one with life. All of life. To be one with our brothers and sisters to celebrate their triumphs, to be joyful in the good things that happen to them because they are a brother. It's the experience that they chose to have. They chose to have. So we can let love reflect back to us and say, what experiences am I choosing? And then we know we have the power to modify our thoughts and our actions.
actions to consciously participate in our transformation. So, love your neighbor as yourself. Key, love yourself. Love yourself. Because once we begin to love ourself, we become that love and we allow that love to flow. It's natural. We're not looking for anybody to do anything for us. We're loving them because they are love. No more. It's a simple process. And what that does is it melts those barriers and separation. We aren't going to withhold love anymore. That's not the new paradigm we're moving into. We're not going to be allowed to withhold love and stay on planet Earth. This place is transforming. The consciousness is transforming. And we're all being asked to transform. And if we couldn't do it, we wouldn't be asked. Remember the saying? God wouldn't ask us to do it if we couldn't do it. It's what we're afraid to let go of that keep us from taking that step. So have the courage to love. Love fearlessly. Live fearlessly. You're eternal. You can't be killed. You see? There's just more experiences, more opportunities, and more love. Let's go with them. So as we sit in your chair, just close your eyes and, and breathe. And as you breathe, just uh, once again ask to feel God's love filling you. And as you breathe, feel your heart begin to feel that warmth and that radiance and that expansion of love. And allow that love to just flood through your whole body. Feel your energy getting lighter and freer. And become aware of a, a calm of light coming over you as you sit. And just feel yourself being lifted now. Lifted up this light, this living light, and, and, and transported to a, to a beautiful meadow with flowers, and trees, and birds. It's teeming with life. And as you look around this beautiful meadow, just feel how good it feels to be here. Just feel how loved and supported you are. And as you stand in this meadow, looking around and, and feeling the love and support of the universe, become aware of a radiant star that's right above your head. And you can feel the energy of this star its radiance, its purity. And it begins to, to shower down a ray of light that moves right into your crown chakra, the top of your head, and, and that radiant light just begins to move through your whole body. And just breathe in the light. Breathe in this living light. Breathe in this light of transformation. And if there are any walls that you want tore down, direct this light towards those walls. If there's any habits or patterns that you're ready to be free of, direct this light towards them. If there's anyone that you're at odds with. Direct that light towards them. And just allow that light to reveal the light that's within that person. That God light that's within that person, that love. That you're able to see them in a new light.
just feel that light moving through your body, moving through your body consciousness, bringing balance, harmony, and peace. Allowing for that fountain of love from within your heart to begin to flow freely and abundantly out into your world. Sending your love before you. And just breathe and feel how loved you are. How supported you are. Breathe and feel the love you are. that's above you just begins to grow and expand even brighter and it begins to engulf you as you're just standing in the light now. As you become the light, you just feel yourself being lifted, transported through time and space back into this room, back into your chair. And just breathe and feel a gentle quickening in your heart. Just allow that light and love to move through your physical body now. From the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet to your fingertips. See yourself filled with this light. A radiant being of light. Whole, complete, and perfect. Light I am. So just breathe. Feel and breathe in out. I am. Gently will be your toes and fingers. And gently open your eyes. Jesus said, love one another even as I have loved you. That was his directive to the disciples at the Last Supper. Love one another even as I have loved you. Beautiful. St. John says, let us love one another, for love is of God. If we love one another, God lives in us. And divine love is perfected in us. So as we go forth this week, let's remember who we are. We're the sons and daughters of God. And we've got that fount of love in our heart. And if we just keep taking off <coughs> limitations and our resistance to love and be courageous in our natural expression, the world will transform before us. Everybody ready? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, God. Yeah. Yeah.